Hello friends, I am SRK, scientist Radhe Krishnan and my assistant Bini will be joining us soon. I wonder where she is. Bini, what are you doing with my two-in-one? And what's with the headphones? These are too big. Bini, listen to me. But sir... Bini, how can you listen to such loud music? You will ruin your ears. But how sir? That's because such loud music, bang in your ears can harm your eardrum. Oh! You need to understand the difference between music and noise. But what I'm listening to is loud music. Well, that's noise. Let's enter the magical world of science and find out more on how we perceive sound as music or noise. Hearing sound. In this module, you will learn about how various parts of ears help us to hear sound. How are we able to hear sound? Sound originates from a vibrating source and travels through a medium to reach us. We are able to hear sound with the help of the ear. An amazing piece of kit it is. The human ear can only detect sound ranging from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. About the size of a matchbox. The ear contains a high fidelity sound detection system capable of picking up a wide range of sounds. It can single out a specific sound above a whole cacophony of other noise. You have two ears, don't you? Wondered ever why? Not only the ears allow you to hear sounds, but also provide special information about the direction and layout of the sounds. Okay, Bini, did you do the homework I gave you yesterday? Stop pretending that you cannot hear me. I know very well that you can. Now can you hear me? Hmm. Now you see? I knew you could hear me for sure. But sir, how could you be so sure that the sound reached my ear? Well, for that, let me show you how sound travels in an ear. Sound enters the ears and travels through its different parts before finally getting interpreted by the brain. Look at the diagram. You can see that the ear has several parts. They are the external ear, pinna, the ear canal, the ear drum, tympanic membrane, ear bones, ossicles, cochlea and the auditory nerve. The pinna first collects sound waves and directs them through the ear canal to the ear drum. The ear drum is a thin sheet of skin stretched tightly across the end of the ear canal. The vibrations of air molecules in the ear canal make the ear drum vibrate. The vibrations of the ear drum set up vibrations in three tiny interlinked bones called anvil, hammer and stirrup. Look at the diagram. Aren't these three bones arranged in a liver-like manner? Why? So that the vibrations in the stirrup are greater than those in the ear drum. The stirrup vibrates against a membrane called cochlea, which is a coiled tube filled with fluid and tiny hair strands. The vibrating cochlea sets up vibrations in the fluid, which in turn moves the hair strands. The tiny hair strands respond to the vibrating fluid by producing tiny electrical signals, which move along the auditory nerve to the brain. The brain interprets these electric signals as sounds. Certain animals can hear sounds beyond the range of the human ear. Dogs can hear high-pitched sounds that humans cannot detect. Likewise, bats use very high-pitched chirps to detect prey, which are beyond the human range of hearing.
Friends, you can see the discomfort firecrackers cause others. So even if you wish to celebrate, make sure that you are not disturbing anyone else. Happiness can be celebrated in many ways. Try the noiseless ways to do the same. For some, loud music can be pleasant and for some, it can be purely a noise. So we should take care that we don't create noise pollution. There are many ways of reducing noise pollution. Let's take a look at some. Noise pollution occurs when unwanted sounds in the environment disrupt the life of the people. The sounds coming from vehicles, industries, construction sites and loud music cause noise pollution. Excessive noise causes discomfort and stress to people and have a negative impact on their health. So many measures have been taken to tackle the problem of noise pollution. Measures to control noise pollution. The sound barriers such as wooden fence should be constructed along the sides of busy roads. The sound barriers help in reducing the noise level being transmitted to the nearby residential areas. Industries and factories should be set up at a considerable distance from cities. Use of loudspeakers, horns and amplifiers should be restricted, especially at night. Engines used to run vehicles should be designed to make minimum noise. Silencers can be fitted in engines of vehicles to absorb the noise produced thereby reducing noise pollution. Binny, have you ever seen the symbol at traffic lights showing no horn, please? Why do you think the reason for that? Mm, so that we don't honk when we are all waiting for traffic light to turn green and hence make noise. Brilliant, Binny. You realize the importance of not producing noise pollution and for exactly same reason, we should not play loud music in the cars with all its windows open. Oh yes, I have seen that so many times. A car with all its windows down and the car stereo playing very loud passes by us. Sir, the noise so produced disturbs the fellow commuters on the road instantaneously. It can cause an accident. How disgusting! That's truly said, Binny. Never play loud music in a car. And more so, never play loud music with all its windows down. Right, sir. Now, Binny, I know you have heard a lot, but there is still one more bit to know. So let's move on to our Do You Know segment. Sure, Professor. Hmm, do you know? You must never put a sharp pointed or hard thing into ear. It can damage the eardrum. The damaged eardrum can impair hearing. Sometimes total hearing impairment, which is rare, is usually from birth itself. Children with impaired hearing need special care and need to learn sign language to communicate effectively. Because speech develops as the direct result of hearing, a child with a hearing loss may have defective speech also. There are machines for the hearing impaired too. In fact, sir, my neighbour uses a machine in his ear to hear properly. It seems to be working for him and it really doesn't feel that he has a hearing problem. was quite a bit of hearing and listening, isn't it? Well, let's do a short recap now. Let's summarize what we have learnt. Sound can be heard with the help of the ear. The human ear can detect sound ranging from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. The ear has several parts. The external ear, pinna, the ear canal, the eardrum, tympanic membrane, the ear bones, ossicles, the cochlea and the auditory nerve. Noise pollution occurs 
when unwanted sounds in the environment disrupt the life of the people. The sounds coming from vehicles, industries, construction sites and loud music cause noise pollution. Measures to control noise pollution The sound barriers such as wooden fence should be constructed along the sides of busy roads. Industries and factories should be set up at a considerable distance from cities. Use of loudspeakers, horns and amplifiers should be restricted, especially at night. Engines used to run vehicles are installed with silencers. Well, Binny, you have been listening to me very patiently today. Well, Professor, you would have pulled my ears for sure had I not. I really didn't have an option but to listen to you, didn't I? Well, when have I pulled your ears? In fact, maybe I should now. Well, friends, I am going to take Binny to task today. So, goodbye and see you again.